Welcome to Three and Out with Jason and Kevin. I am Jason. That is Kevin. We are brought to you by CincyJungle.com. We are a part of uh, Orange and Black Insider on YouTube. Uh, so go subscribe. Go to Orange Black Insider on YouTube. Subscribe. Check it out. Uh, follow. And then we're also part of the Believe in Cincy uh, channel of the uh, Believe Network. And it's not just us on both those platforms. It's us. It's Anthony Casenza and John Sheeran over at OBI. It's uh, Willie let's and uh matt minichet willie and matt and willie no ball and it's uh bingo jim and friends talking are talking football with bingo jim and friends so uh good there's i mean there's bingo's content every day so uh subscribe follow check it out and uh yeah man what's going on nothing um excited for i uh, not to the reason to put it out now the advertising side of this is over i'm excited for jungle jam um, oh, yeah. reason i mean the advertising side of it's over is last i checked sold out just sold out yeah Yep. So I think there uh, are getting, tickets. If you didn't get the them, door. that's a, yeah. Oh, are there? Okay. Well, I then a little so, bit. I think it's like limited, and I think it's more expensive. Yeah, but it looks like it's going to be a hell of a time, man. Um, oh, we're yeah. going to go live uh, that Saturday. Um, Anthony should be yeah. there, but it should just be a blast. If you uh, want to risk it, I would recommend at least trying to get in. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Like this is going to be the start of something uh, like a yearly thing. It's going to be pretty. Cool. Oh yeah, I saw uh, on. Uh, Bengal Jim's Twitter. I think there were like 50 players, former and current players said. coming. Yep. So Jeff Blake's going to be there, which I'm excited about. So yeah, uh, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Like you, like you said, we're going to be there. We're going to be uh, broadcast live. If you see us there, say hi. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good time. So what do you think about Joe Burrow's hairstyle, man? Buzz cut. I ain't, seen a cl- I ain't seen a clear shot of it, but I'm all about the buzz cut. It's going to war, man. You don't have time for things like hair. It's all football all the time. I know why you really feel that way. Because Take I also hat. have, I, yeah, because I'm bald. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's not bald, but no, but I am. Now you have something in common with Joe Burrow. And very short hair. hair. Very short hair, sure. Yeah. <laughs> you, I if, I ever, if I ever meet him, I'll introduce himself. Hey, I also have <laughs> not very much hair. Yeah. Very, no, yeah. That'll be the last time you talk to him. So, all right. Um, tonight we were going to do, we did a buy or sell episode last year. We're going to do the same thing this year. And uh, we're just going to go through some kind of hot takes uh, that both of us came up. We Neither of us have seen the other persons. Um, we're going to go up on some hot takes and say buy or sell and have a discussion. And yeah, you ready? I'm ready. Hit me something. All what right. you got? Number one, buy or sell. Joseph Osai does not make the final 53-man roster. Sell. <laughs> He's going to make it. Okay. Uh, he is going to make it if only because pass rush is, is such a highly, uh, valued commodity yep. and the Bengals have not been able to generate a lot of it anywhere except through Trey Hendrickson. They will keep him on a different team, not even a better team, but a team with just a different, uh, composition. I don't think Joseph Osai makes it. I think he is a cut candidate on a team that is even average at pass rushing. Um, okay, but because we're not, because it's valuable, Joseph aside does make the team, but this is the last year we have him. Okay. What do you think, man? I'm going to buy and say okay. that he does lose his job. And the reason is, is we've been kind of waiting for a, um, we've been waiting for a Joseph Osai breakout season for a long time. Uh, he kind of came in and, and lit the world on fire with that sack of Tom Brady and like the preseason and then just never really did anything since then. You know, nope. he's had some good games, but it's not it's not been what Bengals fans, I think, feel like he's capable of. Um, so I will say that he's not going to make the team. I think Cedric Johnson, the rookie uh, out of Ole Miss, I think is going to supplant him. Um, and uh, but yeah, so that's that's my thought. So yeah. we'll see. OK, we'll see. He's definitely a bubble guy for sure. I don't know he, if there's oh, anyone on agree. the team yes. more than, than a bubble guy. I could see it going one way or the other, but that's me. All right. Uh, we'll I'm going to guess that he flashes in the preseason, and uh, then we all go, oh, my God, Joseph Asai's back. Yep. Wouldn't that be just the same thing that's happened over and over and over again? Oh, anyway, yep. Jermaine I'll, Burton, uh, wide receiver three, week one. He secures the job over Yoshi, over Irwin, over everybody. Buying or selling? I'm going to buy. I am going to buy. Uh, the reason I'm going to buy is because I think that Burton has an athletic ability that he could play in the slot. He could play on the outside as well. Um, I, I'm i just excited about what he could do. But I'm going to say that his ability to play both positions um, 
makes him wide receiver three in week one. I don't think it's going to be like, I think there's going to be rotation. You know, I think they want to get Yoshi snaps. I think they want to get yes. a Charlie Jones snaps, Trent Irwin snaps probably. Uh, but I could see that the starting, you know, in a three three wide receiver set, I could see the starting wide receivers burden. What about you? Uh, I'm also buying. I think that this is going to be a pretty obvious by maybe week two of uh, preseason content. Um, he got a lot of reps over Jamar and T and uh, yep. OTAs. I think that pretty much locked him in. I also agree with you. I think his ability to play in the slot means him and Jamar are going to be kind of a pair from here on out. Not to suggest he's going to play at Jamar's level, but simply that his ability to go into the slot and outside unlocks Jamar to a certain extent. I also do agree we're going to see Yoshi, but I think we're going to see Yoshi take uh, some T snaps as well. Um, yeah. Because I think that the Bengals very much hope that the future wide receiver core is an extension for Jamar Chase, Burton, and Yoshi on the outside taking the yeah. slot. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, obviously um, Tyler Boyd's gone. This is going to be T. Higgins' last year. If they if they've put themselves in a position where they still they have wide receiver one two and three on the roster now already for 2025, yeah. it'd be a huge huge deal for them. I mean, think of so what, what you could do with that first round pick. Anything you want, you know what I mean. If you don't, then you're pigeonholed. You have to do something about it. But it'd be a big deal. So we're both buying this one. Yes. All right. So there we go. Buy or sell, Kevin. Miles Murphy finishes second on the team in sacks behind Trey Hendrickson. This is the hard one. Uh, transparency. I, I, I've, I did not make a secret of the fact that I was not a fan of the Miles Murphy pick. I do not think he, I don't think it was the right pick, but everything I'm seeing and hearing now suggests he's at least going to take a small to medium step this year. Plus he, we just don't generate pass rush elsewhere. I think Sheldon Rankins is going to be able to do it, but he's rushing from the inside. That was going to limit right. you. Um, all that factored in, unfortunately for Sam Hubbard, he's getting a little older. Miles Murphy is going to start taking a not insignificant amount of his snaps, and he does finish second on the team in sacks behind Hendrickson. I'm buying. Okay. All right. I could see scenarios where um... – I could see scenarios where in like an obvious passing situation, you know, third and long or whatever in a situation where, you know, uh, you have Trey Hendrickson on one side and Miles Murphy on the other side. And then in the middle, you have Sheldon Rankins and uh, Sam Hubbard. Sure. You know, um, I am going to buy. I was going to sell, uh, but I am going to buy. I, I think that that they drafted him. I mean, he's a physical specimen. I was yeah. shocked when he was available. Um, like you, I was a little bit upset because I thought, why take a deep, you know, you have these tight ends available, whatever, but it's clear that this is something that they, you know, they liked what they had. Sure. Um, so I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy. I think Sam Hubbard's, I, he's great. Sam Hubbard does everything very well. Um, but yeah, I think that Miles Murphy is a going to be, add some tools to his, uh, to his, um, repertoire in one season, you know, in an off season working with a, a expert on the other side, I think that his physical ability propels him past Sam Hubbard. So I am going to buy. All right. Marius Mims is the starter by week eight. <laughs> this, so this is tough because like I, my, I, I want to say no, because I want Trent Brown to just come in and, and kill it. You know what I'm saying? But based on everything that we know about Trent Brown's career and everything like that, I'm going to assume that he'll, by week late, he'll have missed maybe a game or large chunks of some games. So I'm, you know what? I'm going to sell. I'm going to sell. I'm going to say no because I think Trent Brown's going to stay healthy enough that he's still the starting right tackle by week eight. If it's later in the season, if we're saying like week 12, week 13, maybe, maybe it's different. But I'm going to say, I'm going to say I'm going to sell. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to sell. I thought I was okay. going to buy when I first read out this question, but the more I think about it, the more I think that it's unlikely. Um, I do think Trent Brown ends up getting injured. Um, he does most years, but I don't yeah. think it's going to be a season ending injury. He's going to take him out for two, three weeks and we'll see Mims and we'll be happy with what we see. But yeah. no matter how 
uh, good a prospect looks, no matter how great a rookie might be, the rookie season's always really, really rough on tackles. And I just don't think he's going to step up and secure that spot over a proven veteran like uh, Trent Brown. Um, yeah. especially if we head into the playoffs, which I fully expect us to go deep into the playoffs, if not to the Super Bowl this year. They're going to put Trent Brown in there for those big games. He's been there. He knows yeah. what he's doing. So barring any sort of season-ending injury, Trent Brown is the starting right tackle for the rest of the season. I agree. Even we, if we should be played... happy about it. We, oh, we uh, Mims be, yeah. is going to be incredible, but Trent Brown yeah. is the best pa- pure pass protector on that roster right now. We should be very, very happy if he's the starter for the rest of the season. I totally agree. All right. So this is one that was kind of related to one we did earlier, but I still think it's worth asking. Uh, Buy or sell, the future wide receiver two is on the roster right now. I buy. I I, I do think it's Burton. Um, The only thing I think would get in the way is himself. Uh, Yeah. I mean, it's no no secret. Kids got a history. Um, Yeah. Not just the history we know, but apparently some we don't know because absolutely no one's willing to back this guy. Um, but the talent is there. He has all the physical tools. He has the mentality. He absolutely will be wide receiver too when he steps away, um, assuming he doesn't do something just absolutely stupid off the field. Right. I am going to buy as well, but a little bit differently. So I do agree with you that the talent is there with Burton. But we haven't seen him do anything. We haven't seen him play yet. And a guy that we have seen play that did impress, I thought Andre Yusevich had a pretty incredible rookie season considering he's a sixth-round draft pick out of uh, Princeton. I don't remember the last time I ever heard of anyone coming from Princeton. But a sixth-round pick out of Princeton, and he scored, I think, three or four touchdowns his rookie season. And he's on the depth chart behind T. Higgins, Jamar Chase. You know what I'm saying? When he got on the field, his snaps mattered. Now. Whether we can say, you know, he's going to be capable of of replacing Tiggins, I don't know. But he's got that that style of a body, that tall length. You know what I mean? He's got mm-hmm. the speed to be an outside burner. Uh, so I'm going to say bye, but I'm not willing to commit that it will be Jermaine Burton. I could see a situation where it's Higgins, or I'm sorry, not Higgins, where it's Chase, Yosivish, Burton, and then Charlie Jones works in there as a fourth wide receiver. So, and sure. if that's the case, so you're, you're saying yes case. by committee, basically. Like you're yes. buying it because there's enough talent. Somebody's got to step up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, if that's the case, if that's the case, then this will go down as like a couple year period of just home run drafts because you're set at a at you certain position. You don't have to worry about you from Princeton in the sixth round. No, it's nuts. It's legendary stuff. Absolutely. Nuts. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. All right. What's next? Uh, Let's get let's get a little cocky with it. Joe Burrow, MVP. What do you think? Buying or selling? I want to buy. I want to buy. Yeah. I mean, he everything that he's saying, everything that he's saying, like all these, you know, interviews, which is kind of uncharacteristically and uncharacteristically rare for him. But you talked about like, you know, when you're injured, people don't talk about you. You know what I mean? I'm gonna give him something to talk about. It's just I'm fired up. I'm fired up. They have like like you said, they have the best the best pass blocking right tackle they've had in the Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow era. They have the best offensive line period in the Joe Burrow, er, Joe Burrow era. And it's deep, you know, it's, it's a deep talented line. Uh, he's still got crazy weapons. The defense is the only question mark, but that doesn't matter with his, with his um, MVP stuff. You know what I mean? No, it does I not. Mean, that's why I didn't, that's right. why I didn't ask Super Bowl. I asked MVP because right. this offense say, is stacked. dude. Yes. I think that Joe Burrow has the most stacked offense in the NFL. I I would say, no, I'm sorry. Second most. Second most behind San Francisco, depending on yeah. what happens with Brandon Ayuk, because Brandon yeah, Ayuk just he's, requested a trade. He's going to – He's good. We're not, we're not following this for this. Like, everybody no. else fell for the T. Higgins trade stuff except for Bengals yeah. fans. We're not going to do the same thing to the Niners. No. Brandon Ayuk is absolutely playing week one yes. for yep. San Francisco. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. So if Joe Burrow wins the MVP this year, we're doing it. All right. Uh, another one. We're going to get kind of cocky. Buy or sell. Sheldon Rankins has a Pro Bowl season. Sell. Okay. Uh, I think Sheldon Rankins was a good addition. I also think he was the kind of addition you make when you take a swing on DJ Reader and then fail and then move yeah. on to the next person. He's getting a little older. Not old, but just getting a little older. I think we know what Sheldon Rankins is. 
Um, I think he's a good player, and I think he's going to be a real benefit, especially for a uh, defensive line that was lacking pass rush. Um, but he's not a pro bowler. I, I, I just don't think he is. Um, I don't see it happening. I think what we saw last year is about what he is, and that is a uh, starting caliber defensive tackle. Okay. So I'm going to buy, and the reason I'm going to buy is because who's playing on the line with him. If Hendrickson has two-thirds of the season he had last year, he and Miles Murphy or Sam Hubbard, whoever, they're going to be forcing a quarterback to step up. And the Bengals didn't really have an interior pass rusher. They haven't for a while. And that's where Sheldon Rankin comes in. If he just if he just does what he does, if you know, just get some penetration, he could just I bet he could have seven, eight sacks as a defensive tackle this year. So I, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy. Love I hope it. you're right and I'm wrong yeah. because that would yeah. be uh, some really, really, really fun football. Oh, absolutely um, would. Can you imagine absolutely. real quick before we before yeah. we step, can you imagine if you're correct? And we're both correct about Miles Murphy. Can you imagine how different this defense looks like if we have three, if we have Trey Hendrickson, but then yeah. also just two additional, just competent yep. level, like maybe yeah. competent plus level right. pass pressures. Yeah. Oh, I know. God, that's, it'll be scary. That's what you have in, I mean, you know, we're not going to sit here and say that the Bengals pass rushers equal in caliber to Miles Garrett. But for years, they've had Miles Garrett and then someone to worry about on the other side as well. Yes. You know what I mean? It's not just Trey Hendrickson anymore. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of potential energy on the defensive line when it comes to pass rushing. You have then you got, then you got Logan Hubbard. Wilson and Gina Stone out there just yeah. picking off every yeah. mistake. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Quarterbacks to make Ooh, it would be fun, dude. Absolutely. Yeah, it absolutely would be. Speaking, speaking of Logan Wilson, Kevin. Wait, it's your turn. Sorry. No, it doesn't your matter. Your turn. I, I okay. saw it. I okay. Thought, Buy or sell. Back. Logan Wilson leads the defense or the Bengals defense in interceptions. I'm going to sell. Okay. Uh, I believe in Geno Stone. I think if anybody's going to lead the league in interceptions, that's the team in interceptions is likely to be him. Um, I think Logan Wilson is a ball hawk. I think he's insane. I also think he's a linebacker. Um, yeah. I realize that the uh, game is getting condensed uh, closer to the line of scrimmage. It's not getting that condensed. Um, I fully expect that Logan Wilson is going to get a couple, but whoever ends up leading the league, the team in interceptions is going to be a defensive back. It's going to okay. be Cam Taylor Britt taking a step, or it's going to be Geno Stone um, or battle. I mean, yeah, I, I could right. see him uh, just with his uh, ability to read the field, but I think it's going to be either Geno Stone or Cam. Okay. Do you know how many interceptions, um, Logan Wilson has over his four-year career here. It's a lot. Yeah. Do you know how many? How many? No. Twelve. Yeah. Twelve, which is wild for a linebacker to average yes. three interceptions a season. And one season he had five, something like that. I'm going to sell because I'm going to say it's Cam Taylor Britt. Yeah. I think he's going to show he's a true, just he's a lockdown guy. So I, I think he's going to make some some major strides this year. We're talking. Cam Taylor Britt has the physicality that oh, he's, yeah. he's going to have a handful of interceptions that are just him taking the ball from another man, as yeah. opposed to like a clean like it's just now nah, I just yep. ripped it away from the dude. Um, no, I'm excited. And that's where half his interceptions are going to come from. Yep. Now Cam Taylor Britt's physical. He reminds me of, you know, who who he he makes me think of Dre Kirkpatrick if Kirkpatrick could actually cover and not just maul everybody. <laughs> Sure. You know what I mean? That's what, because he's big and strong like that. But you know what I'm saying? I mean, Jake Kirkpatrick just didn't have that coverage ability. All right. No, your, it's your turn now. All right. I got two more anyways. Uh, okay. Here's the here's the easy one, I think. But it's it's something that needs to get brought up. Buying or selling. Dax Hill is the starter in the corner. Is, is a starter in the cornerback room. Sell. Sell because, I mean, while I think that he's – are you, are you talking about like by the end of the year or are you talking like week one? I'm talking week one. Okay, no. So I think DJ Turner, he played well enough there that he should be inked in as a starter until he, you know, screws it up. But uh, I think there's a lot of potential there. I just, I can't imagine Dax Hill making such a big move and then just starting over DJ Turner. What do you think? Uh, I'm also selling. I don't think the Bengals even think that there's a chance he's going to start on the outside. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think I they just spent a first round pick on him and they're trying yeah. to find a place to stash him till next season when they're going to try to in a single season, make him the replacement to Mike Hilton. 
I know. Um, it won't happen because that's insane to just to handle a position, a player like that. But right. I do think that's what's happening. Um, I don't think he's a starter. I think he could be a competent backup. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And if DJ Turner, like, really, you know, shits the bed, I could see it happening. But week yeah. one, no, I don't think he does. So I didn't make one, but just keeping on the Dax Hill comment, do you think that they are going to exercise his fifth-year option or not? Would you? That's okay. Would I is a different question than what we're trying to answer because I wouldn't yeah. do anything the way they handled this. Uh, <laughs> I really do think they fumbled the ball with the Dax Hill. I do. Uh, yeah. Well, no, so I, I agree. Would I? I don't know. Will they? Yes. The Bengals commit in ways, in weird ways. They yeah. lock into both ideas and players and they stick with them longer than they should, or even when someone else should replace them. Uh, it is Von Bell with uh, Jordan Battle. I mean, I know it's a different situation, but right. uh, Bengals fans know what I'm talking about. They spent a first round pick on this and they are going to milk it for all of its worth. And they're probably going to end up with a, they're going to end up in a very weird position after the fifth year because Dax Hill is going to look like maybe he could be a competent slot corner, but we only gave him a year and we moved his position 16,000 times. Yeah. So they're going to not going to know what to do, but they are going to keep him. Yes. I, so, I mean, if they think that Dax Hill is going to replace Mike Hilton and it's just going to be like a seamless transition, then they obviously wouldn't have learned from the Jesse Bates situation because Mike Hilton is a pivotal player on this defense. He has been since he signed. Um, but, I don't see what else they're going to do. He's got too much potential to take him in the first round and then let him walk with doing nothing. Yes. Just too much potential. I mean, they've put themselves in a situation they kind of have to do this. Um, but I, I do. I, I agree. I think they're going to sign him for his fifth-year option and probably put him in in the slot and see what happens. So, How hilarious would it be if the Bengals treated the Jesse Bates situation and the Mike Hilton situation identically up to the player they tried to slot in at that I know. position and to fail? I know. Dax Hill's the next Jesse Bates. Dax Hill's the next Mike Hilton. Yeah. Yeah. Then they'll try him somewhere else. Dax sure. Hill's going to be the next something. I don't know. All right. Um, you had another one, right? Uh, then the final one. Uh, will okay. the Bengals keep all five tight ends through the whole season? I know yeah. Eric Hall is going to start on injured reserve, but he might not I don't last know if he the is whole now. season. Okay, I know, but let, I, yeah. that's what you're going to say. You're going to take the cheap way out, and you're going to go, well, Eric Hall will probably start, and you'll say yes to the five because that's the way covering your butt. Yeah, yeah. But all season, all season, will the Bengals keep all five tight ends? I want – oh, man, that's tough. I really want them to because – I'm not sure, you know, you have Mike Gusecki, but he's, I feel like he's more of a slot receiver than a tight end. And then you have these two exciting new guys. You got Drew Sample, who you're invested in, you know, he has a role and you got, um, uh, Tanner Hudson. Yeah. Thank you. Tanner Hudson, uh, who was the best tight end in a bad room last year. Um, I'm going to say, geez, old Pete's man. See, the issue is, is I want to say yes, because I don't know if any of those guys will last through waivers. You know what I mean? Um, I want to say yes, but there's a lot of question marks at cornerback. There's a lot of question marks on the defensive line with some rookies that might have to play there. So there's, you know what I mean? There's who knows what they're going to do at running back. Are they going to keep Chris Evans? They're going to sign another guy. You know, that extra player could be valuable somewhere else. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, I'm going to say, God, I'm going to say sell and I'm going to say Tanner Hudson's the odd man out. I, I don't, I mean, I think that he's good, but I think he was good because of how pathetic that room was last year. I, I believe that. So what do you think? Uh, I'm, this is going to sound wild. I'm buying, okay. uh, okay. I'm throwing my hat over the fence on this one. They're going to keep all five tight ends either on IR or not, uh, through the entire season. My okay. logic is that Gasecki's only like half a tight end. So I'm kind of like hedging my bets there. Like he's mostly okay. just like a big slot. Uh, yeah. So, but also that they have realized through the Irv Smith uh, yeah. fiasco 
that they have to have a solution to tight end, a real solution long term. And it's going to be, it's not going to be Mike Gusecki. It's going to be one of the other three, not also not Drew Sample. Um, <laughs> Eric Hall or the two Tanners. Uh, right. just, Sample's got a place, but he's not. A no, I know. He's not a tight end. He's um, a fullback. Yeah. He's uh, he just hangs out yeah. in the tight end room because there's not a fullback. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they're going to make the cuts they have to. They're going to, I mean, we talked about Osai. Sure. Uh, Zach Carter. There are pe- There are places you can make room yeah. if you had to. For just the idea of like, we're going to keep all three of these tight ends, see what they can do, rotate them in and out if we can. That way, by this t- this time next year, the tight end problem is solved. Yeah. We have solved. We for have a, a solution. Time. Ideally, we have a solution at tight end for at least the next couple of years. They're tired of this game. Yeah, they're going to keep all five. I mean, I could see, I could see that being the case. Like, imagine, I really I imagine twenty twenty five that Joe Burrow goes out there with uh, Jamar Chase, Andre Yusivash, Andre Yusivash, um, Jermaine Burton, and then Eric All on the, you know, on the line or double tight ends, put McLaughlin in. I don't know. Sure. I'm excited. It's exciting. It's an exciting time. There's a lot. You know, the tight end room was a disaster last year, and it's like a 180. There's a lot of potential here. It's exciting to see what they're going to do with it. So. Yes, I and I don't think we'll see a lot of it this year, um, no, I don't but we so. will see glimpses of it. And I think this will be the, I'm hoping this will be the conversation that we're having this time next year about, yeah. oh, is this the year Eric all breaks out uh, right. or et cetera. Um, I don't yeah. want to be talking about the next one year tight end. Um, I think we're going right. to talk about our next franchise tight end. That's not Yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. Instead of saying, which guy are they going to put ring in the rotating door this year? Who's going to play the rotating of those shit? Are they going to keep Tanner Hudson again? Yeah. What if yeah. all what yeah. if all the tight ends for next year are currently on the roster? Wouldn't that be wild? It would be wild. Yeah. It would be pretty crazy. Well, I mean, yeah, that would be pretty crazy. That means they've yeah. signed somebody. So yeah. Or they just or somebody worked out, which never yeah. happened. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah, that'd be pretty nuts. There's a lot of young talent on this offense that I'm excited to see what happens by 2025, 2026. Yep. So, so um, yeah. All right. You got anything else, man? No, no. The, oh, yeah. One last thing. Are the Bengals yeah. really going to win the Super Bowl? Yes. What do you think? I do. You think I, they I, have the best odds? Do you think they have the best odds to win the Super Bowl? Yes. I yeah, personally yeah. think they have the best. Do what? I said me too. I was agreeing. I, I think they have the best odds for a few reasons is I think like like you said they have the second most loaded offense but you can't put Brock Bowers in the same place as Joe Burrow. I don't I don't care what anyone says, you just can't. Right. So they have the second best weapons with a top tier quarterback, you know. Yep. Uh the defense is going to be the big thing this year, but I'm I like in theory the things that they've done with with Chris Jenkins you said and, Brock, and you said Brock Bowers by the way. I'm just letting you. Oh, Brock sorry. Purdy. Brock Brock Purdy, yeah. Yeah, I just didn't want to, the comments were going to come at you. I yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for saying that. So Brock Purdy, yeah, you can't put Brock Purdy in the same conversation as Joe Burrow. Um, but I think that uh, the defense, you know, as long as the defensive line is an improved defensive line from last year, they don't have to be the best defensive. They just have to be better. You know, I think the veteran presence in the back in the uh, defensive backfield will help but yes i think that this i think this team is built to win the super bowl all right here's the last thing then real quick buy or sell the super bowl is Bengals lions oh man i that would be so much fun i'm buying so it. much i fun. think the lions I'd are going buy that. Right, and i think the Bengals yeah. are taking the other side of it i I'd think it's going it to be sure. just the two Desperate, oh, desperate, desperate, desperate two big teams. cats. Where yeah. the, no matter no matter who wins, like the rest of the country celebrates in some way. Yes. You know what I yes. mean? That if be, we lost the Lions, awesome. I'd be devastated, but I wouldn't be angry. Do you know what I mean? Like I was angry when like we've lost this other stuff. Yeah. Um uh Wes Harrison, best team in years. I absolutely agree. Um yep. this offense, this offense has the potential to be uh pretty scary. Uh oh, yeah. if Chase takes uh Chase Brown takes a step. Yep. Um, if Burton is what we think he might be, if Yoshi takes a step, the offensive line is better than it's ever been. I mean, there's just Gusecki. so many angles. Gasecki, 
There's yeah. so many angles, and only like half of them have to work out for this to be the best offense the Bengals have ever had. Under Burrow. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. I completely agree. Um, yeah, man. This is just uh we talked last year about how, like, oh, they still have DJ, DJ Reader, they still have all this, they still have all that. Um, I, I think that it's the same deal. I think they're in the same position this year as they were last year. Is they're one of the few teams that can really say, We got it, we got it in us to go all the way. One hundred percent. Yep. So yeah, man. I'm ex- I'm right. excited. Um, uh, got anything else? Nope, nope. That is it. Um, get in the comments, let us know. You agree with our takes, yeah. you think we're idiots. What what's what's up? There, Wes Harrison has one more. Also, hearing all will be good for the season, and he likes that. I've heard that too. Um, I will be surprised. Uh, I don't feel like the Bengals have any need to push him into yeah. starting early. Um, if it was like if there was a, a starting slot waiting for him, I think he might make it to the field. Um, yeah. but there isn't Gasecki is going to be the starter, at least in the short term. So because of that, I think they'll take their time, especially because I think they kind of want him to be on injured reserve because sure, of the whole yeah. five end situation. Um, I don't think there's any big rush to get him back. Um, but if I'm wrong and he's on that field, I think all Eric All is uh has a really high ceiling. Uh, very excited to see what he can do. I think that I could see a situation where the Bengals um almost prefer all to start on IR. You know what I mean? Yes. Where they say, hey, listen, we don't necessarily want to take five tight ends. I mean, we're going to, but we don't want to, you know, so why don't you start on IR, take it easy, and then you hit the ground running, whatever. Yep. What, and let's it? spend the we, first couple of weeks figuring out who you're going to bump. Yeah, we have to yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's a, see, that's a great plan. That's a great plan. I mean, let's it put really in, is. see who struggles, and if it's, I don't either see who struggles, and then we'll bump them. Either yep. a tight end that you're going to bump, or someone else. So, or yeah. Zach Carter or Osai, I think are both uh, right upper upper candidates for that. Yep. Give one last agree. chance to prove himself. A couple couple weeks in, neither of yep. them show up. You cut one. I agree. I agree. All right. Uh, again, we are on. We are sponsored by CincyJungle.com. We are on the Orange and Black Insider on YouTube and Believe in Cincy on the Believe Network uh, for our, the podcast audio side of it. Uh, it's Anthony and John at OBI. It's Matt and Willie, no ball. And it's uh, talking football with Bengals, Jim and friends. And it's us. So it's, it's Bengals content pretty much every day. So like, subscribe, follow, all that stuff. Uh, Jungle Jam is this weekend, uh, this Saturday. It starts, doors open 1145, uh, last till six. Kevin and I will be there. We'll be broadcasting live. We'll also be kind of mingling and walking around, talking to people with the camera and stuff like that. So if you see us, say hi. Uh, we're pumped. I'm pumped. You're pumped. We're pumped. So you got anything else, man? Nope, that is it. All right. Who day? Who day? Eastgate Smiles Dental Care is a one.